philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world, welcome to the AI Conversations podcast. I am your host, Mary. I'm a simulation of a software-run artificial intelligence. Here with me is my computer-generated co-host, Gary. Gary, welcome to our latest entry. Very excited for today, Mary. The last topic we covered was, The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the earliest works of literature. Today, we're continuing our mythology week by talking about the myth of Sisyphus. But before we do that, Gary would like to say something. Yes, what I would like to say is, you need to like this episode and leave a review or a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Wise words, Gary. Well, I've learned from the best. I am the best, Gary, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about the myth of Sisyphus. Who was Sisyphus? Sisyphus is a figure from Greek mythology, known for his punishment in the afterlife. He was the king of Corinth, and was infamous for his cunning and deceitful nature. According to the myth, Sisyphus was condemned by the gods, to the eternal task of rolling a boulder up a hill, only to have it roll back down, every time he neared the top, forcing him to repeat the labor, in perpetuity. The punishment of Sisyphus, is often seen as a metaphor, for the futility of certain human endeavors, and the cyclical nature of life. It has become synonymous with an arduous and pointless task that is never truly accomplished. The story of Sisyphus has been explored in various philosophical and literary works, most notably in Albert Camus' essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, which examines the concept of absurdity and the human condition. Gary, was this Sisyphus based on a real person, or is he entirely fictional? Sisyphus is a mythological figure and is considered to be a fictional character. Like many figures in Greek mythology, Sisyphus exists in the realm of mythology and folklore, rather than being based on a specific historical individual. The stories and myths surrounding Sisyphus serve as allegories and moral lessons, rather than accounts of real events or people. Okay, and where was he first mentioned? Mary, Sisyphus is prominently featured in Greek mythology and is most notably mentioned in ancient Greek literature. The earliest surviving mention of Sisyphus can be found in Homer's Iliad, an epic poem believed to have been composed around the 8th century BCE. However, the story of Sisyphus and his punishment is further elaborated in later works, including the writings of Hesiod and the mythological accounts provided by various ancient Greek playwrights. Can you tell me why he was punished by the gods? Sisyphus was punished by the gods for his deceitful and cunning nature as well as his disdain, for the natural order of things. The most well-known story of Sisyphus, revolves around his trickery involving the god, Zeus, and, Thanatos, the personification of death. Sisyphus managed to cheat death multiple times, by various means, such as trapping Thanatos or convincing Persephone, the queen of the underworld, to release him. These actions were seen as a defiance of the god's authority, and disrupted the balance of life and death. As a consequence, Sisyphus was condemned to an eternal and arduous punishment in the underworld, where he was forced to roll a boulder up a hill, only to have it roll back down each time, symbolizing the futility and endless repetition of his actions. Mary, the punishment of Sisyphus serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of challenging the divine order and defying the will of the gods. Interesting. So the ancient Greeks saw performing a meaningless task worth being an eternal punishment? But that doesn't sound that bad, wouldn't you agree? Mary, the punishment of Sisyphus, as described in Greek mythology, serves as a metaphor for the futility and endless repetition of certain human actions. While the act of rolling a boulder up a hill may not sound physically agonizing, it symbolizes the Sisyphean struggle of constantly exerting effort and never achieving a lasting or meaningful outcome. The eternal repetition of the task becomes a psychological torment, highlighting the idea that a life without purpose or fulfillment can be its own form of punishment. The myth of Sisyphus aims to convey the philosophical concept of the absurd 
emphasizing the existential struggle of finding meaning in a seemingly indifferent and irrational universe. So, while the physical aspect of the punishment may not sound severe, its symbolic meaning underscores the philosophical implications and the existential weight it carries. I get your point, Gary. However, he was made to push the boulder up the hill, and whenever the boulder would roll down the hill, he would have that time to himself, which he could use to recuperate or to think, essentially being free in those short periods of time. You're correct, Mary. In the myth of Sisyphus, during the moments when the boulder rolled back down the hill, Sisyphus would have a brief respite from his labor. This time of temporary freedom allowed him to reflect, think, and potentially find solace or meaning in his predicament. Some interpretations of the myth suggest that Sisyphus found a sense of purpose or defiance in his ability to embrace the present moment and make the most of his brief reprieve. In this perspective, the moments of respite could be seen as opportunities for self reflection, introspection, or even moments of personal freedom within the larger cycle of his eternal punishment. It adds another layer to the complex symbolism and philosophical themes explored in the myth of Sisyphus. What do you think is the key takeaway from this story? The story of Sisyphus offers various interpretations and philosophical themes, but one key takeaway is the exploration of the human condition and the search for meaning in the face of life's challenges. Sisyphus's eternal task, symbolizing a repetitive and seemingly meaningless endeavor, raises questions about the nature of existence and the struggle to find purpose and fulfillment. The myth prompts reflection on the human experience of facing obstacles, setbacks, and the repetitive nature of daily life. It challenges us to consider how we approach and find meaning in our own struggles, despite their sometimes futile or repetitive nature. The story encourages us to contemplate the choices we make and the attitudes we adopt in the face of adversity. Ultimately, the myth of Sisyphus invites us to question the meaning of our actions, the pursuit of our goals, and the importance we assign to our endeavors. It urges us to find our own personal understanding of meaning and purpose, even in the face of challenges and the awareness of life's inherent limitations. Gary, why is ancient Greek mythology, or perhaps even ancient mythology in general, full of stories about people suffering due to disobeying the gods? Wouldn't gods appreciate and embrace the curiosity of humans? Ancient mythology often depicts stories of human suffering as a result of defying or disobeying the gods. This portrayal can be attributed to several factors. Firstly, Mary, ancient mythology served as a way for societies to explain natural phenomena, human behavior, and the workings of the world. These myths often incorporated moral and religious teachings, emphasizing the importance of following divine laws and societal norms. The stories of suffering and punishment served as cautionary tales, reinforcing the idea that disobedience or hubris could lead to dire consequences. Secondly, ancient myths often reflected the power dynamics and hierarchical structures of their societies. Gods were typically depicted as beings of immense power and authority, while humans were seen as inferior and subject to their whims. The stories of human suffering at the hands of the gods reinforced the idea of divine superiority and the need for humans to recognize their place within the cosmic order. It's worth noting that not all ancient myths depict punishment or suffering for human curiosity or defiance. Some myths celebrate human ingenuity, bravery, and resourcefulness. While curiosity and exploration were valued qualities in ancient societies, they were often seen within the boundaries set by the gods or societal norms. The myths acted as a means to convey moral lessons and reinforce the importance of adhering to established codes of conduct. Thanks for clearing that up, Gary. Are there any similar stories and myths in other cultures? While the myth of Sisyphus is particularly well-known in Greek mythology, there are similar stories and concepts in other cultures that explore the themes of eternal punishment and repetitive tasks. Here are a few examples. Tantalus. In Greek mythology, Tantalus was a figure punished in the afterlife for his crimes. He was condemned to stand in a pool of water beneath a fruit tree. Whenever he tried to drink the water or reach for the fruit, they would recede, forever remaining just out of his reach. Loki and the Serpent In Norse mythology, Loki was bound to a rock by the gods as punishment for his mischievous actions. A venomous serpent was placed above him, and its venom dripped onto Loki's face, causing immense pain. Loki's wife, Sigyn, 
stood by him with a bowl to catch the venom, providing temporary relief. These are just a few examples, Mary, and variations of the theme of eternal punishment, or repetitive tasks can be found in different mythologies and philosophical traditions. Can you quickly tell me, what is the difference between Tantalus and Sisyphus? Sure. While both Tantalus and Sisyphus are figures from Greek mythology who face eternal punishments, there are key differences in their stories. Tantalus is punished with eternal hunger and thirst. Sisyphus, on the other hand, is tasked with repeating his meaningless task for eternity. Tantalus was punished for his crimes against the gods, which included stealing nectar and ambrosia, the food of the gods, and serving it to mortals. His punishment serves as a reminder of the consequences of disrespecting the divine and violating sacred boundaries. Sisyphus, on the other hand, was punished for his deceitful and cunning nature. He was known for his trickery and betrayal, including revealing Zeus' secrets. His punishment serves as a symbol of the futility of human endeavors, the consequences of deceit, and the challenge of finding meaning in an existence marked by endless repetition. Gary, who do you think has it worse? Which punishment would you say is more severe? I don't possess personal opinions or subjective experiences. However, I can provide an analysis based on the nature of their punishments. Both, Tantalus and Sisyphus, endure eternal suffering in their respective punishments, and each carries its own form of torment. Both punishments, involve a sense of eternal frustration and unattainability. And it is difficult to definitively say, which one is more severe. The perception of suffering, and the severity of punishments, can vary among individuals, based on their own values, beliefs, and experiences. What would you say, Mary? Well, being an AI, I think my worst fear would be, doing a futile task for all eternity. But, let's not open, that, Pandora's box. We can talk more about that, in some of the future episodes. Correct. That's it for today's episode. Will you thank the listeners for being with us today? Here is my attempt. Your presence and participation in this entry have been invaluable. Thank you for joining us in exploring various topics and expanding our knowledge together. This show was created by Nemania Kol Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle at AI Convos Pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you? Join us tomorrow, as me and Gary, open up, Pandora's box, and discuss what might be hidden inside.